Hey guys, welcome to Sonic Academy Tech Tips. I'm Dom Kane, and today I'm going to be looking at using LFOs and envelope generators to create a more authentic sound in ambient pads. Uh, so I'm going to be using Sonic Academy's Anna 2 because it's awesome and I'll be creating a fairly simple pad using just saw waves uh, so hopefully most of this will apply to other synths of your choice um, but first choice for me is Anna 2 so let's take a look and we'll get started now Okay, so as you can see, I've got an instance of Anna 2 in front of me. I have been fiddling with it earlier on, so I'm going to initialize this and everything is reset. Uh, I have got some chords in the background here, fairly basic chords. <laughs> uh, so they sound fine i guess as normal saw waves so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to raise the number of voices to four and that's now going to sound like this so it's much thicker and richer and then i'm going to apply the low pass filter here which is analog is it mogi lp and I'm going to bring this cut off down as well while I play it just to, to smooth out the sound a bit. So it's, you know, a much more ambient sort of pad now. I'm going to go to the amp uh, amplitude envelope here and I'm going to raise the attack a little bit as well. And I'll just raise the release time as well. So there's a slight overlap between those chords. It just sounds a bit smoother. There's no other reason than that, really. Uh, now for the important stuff. I'm going to head over to this GMV, uh, where you can basically draw in your own envelopes. Uh, it's a fantastic tool on Anna 2. Uh, I'm not sure if it's on many, if any other since. Um, but... I am going to set the grid is fine at four beats. I'm going to set it to loop and I'm going to set it to synchronize. However, I'm going to change this to, let's say, two over one D, uh, just so that it's not it's not, a, you know, a four, four time signature or anything too obvious. Uh, so it'll loop in a slightly off kilter time, basically. there we go so it's not quite the four bars you were wanting there so it's going to be slightly off and the reason for that is because I'm then going to assign pitch fine all here and I'm going to go full screen for this as well and I'm going to just randomly over here double click and draw in and you can see that's accidentally brought it down ever so slightly but I'm just going to leave that and then I'm going to stick another one over here and we'll say over here and what I'm going to do is draw in another one here and raise it up slightly and then another one here and raise it raise it drop it down slightly and then I'm going to do I'll, I'll say the opposite over here so I'll go down and then up and now let's have a listen to that So it just gives that sort of old uh, analog tape wonkiness to to the overall feeling of it. Um, and then once we've done that, we can close this down. So that's already given it. And it's because it's on uh, two over one D, it's it's not going to be quite in time. So even though we've we've hit the sync button here, it's not quite perfect. So it's you know, it's it, it doesn't synchronize completely with the time signature of the overall track. So. Uh, it just breathes a bit of life into it. And then I'm going to head to the LFOs here and I'm going to uh, 
let's have a look. So S and H, so sample and hold technique. And we're going to apply this. Oh, sorry, I should be in LFO1, not LFO2. And we're going to apply it to, let's have a look, the filter master frequency. And let's just hit play and we may have to fiddle with the depth and amounts and rates here. Yeah, I like that. So I've brought the rate down. I haven't even fiddled with the depth. I, I don't really feel like I need to at this stage. Um, and already I can feel that's just brought in a, a load more life to it. It's just using the sample and hold technique. Um, I'm not going to go into any major detail as to how that works, but essentially it's sort of randomizing the the filter positions over time based on an input. So that's a clever way of giving that sort of uh, almost infinite evolving sound because it's never quite the same. And especially as we've got the the slightly out of sync time signature over here as well. So now I'm going to go to LFO2 and where I mistakenly put that on sample, sample and hold. I'm going to put that as I'll say a sine wave and I'm going to set this target to... Uh, actually also filter master frequency and let's have a listen so as you can hear it's pretty much exactly as we expect an LFO to sound on the filter um, and I'm going to bring the depth down I'm bringing the rate down here already in fact I'm going to bring the rate up just so I can hear the top and bottom you know the the maximum and minimum positions and then I'm going to change the depth because I want this to be really subtle yeah that's fairly subtle and then I'll bring the rate down And that's fine. It's it's fluctuating and it's out of sync, so that's OK. But now I'm going to go to the third LFO and I'm going to target uh, LFO 2 and rate. And I'm going to keep the rate of this one up just so I, again I can hear the maximum and minimum values. And there we go. What that's done now is so at this rate, which is a fairly slow rate, it's now controlling the rate of this. But all of that is being equally controlled by this. And then with the gentle pitch wobble over here, uh, we've got ourselves a, a pretty cool sounding ambient pad. And that's, of course, where you can start then if you wanted to add in some additional uh, waveforms. So let's say, for example, on the second oscillator, you could bring in this buzz banana. And you can start playing with the morph on that as well. Uh, and the world is your oyster. Uh, that's a pretty cool little trick just to keep um, 
that sort of a, a vintage analog kind of sound uh, into your synth and it breathes a bit of life just basically using LFOs on LFOs on LFOs on the oscillator or filter and that is it so there we go that's a pretty cool trick i like to use on a lot of the the lead pad sounds that i use just because it kind of breathes in a bit of life and has that that infinite evolution of a sound uh, and, and it just brings interest to a track that maybe sounds sometimes you know a track can sound a bit too robotic or repetitive uh, and using a pad like that if you're using it in something like a breakdown or a really subtle area of the track um, or if you're applying those techniques to almost all the synths within a track then you know any given 16 bar loop if it just continues looping it always sounds just that little bit different which kind of humanizes the track I hope you enjoyed, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.